Let's go to the courts, the start of Friday edition of the Sports Max Zone and specifically the badminton court. Only one Jamaican, Nigella Saunders, has ever represented Jamaica in badminton at the Olympic Games. Saunders contested the women's singles competition at the 2004 Athens Olympics. But the badminton fraternity is hoping that the mixed doubles pair of Samuel Ricketts and Talia Richardson can qualify for next summer's Paris Olympics. Both players are gearing up for this weekend's national championship and they join us to discuss their journey that will hopefully culminate in Paris next year. Yeah, let's welcome them. Samuel Ricketts and Talia Richardson, lady and gentleman. First of all, how are you guys doing? We're doing great, you know, grateful for life, health and strength. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, as Talia said, really good to be here, really honored. Yeah. How does Paris 2024 sound? It's a really good ring to it, <laughs> but you know, it's a lot of hard work that comes with even just qualifying for it, but it's a goal that we're looking forward to and we're working hard to get there. Yeah, yeah. it's really tough in the Pan Am region. Um, only I think about two or three players go, and right now we're like top eight in the Pan Am region. So we still have to kind of get some good results and hopefully we can see how we can make a push. Yeah. Let's get a little bit deeper into that Paris push. Um, Ranked 93 in the world as a mixed doubles pair, number one in the Caribbean, which in and of itself is an amazing achievement. Yeah. Between now and the games, what exactly would you need to do to get there? It's just about uh, maximizing on points because we haven't been playing for very long, to be very honest, and we've made massive strides. So yeah. it's just about the last few tournaments before qualification closes is just about like doing really well at those tournaments international challenges that's where we can get most points so it's just about going if not making it to the finals at least the semi-finals to kind of garner those points to get the ranking up more yeah. what's been the most difficult part of the journey you would say i would say definitely being apart from each other in terms of training mm. uh, so when we play uh, it's been like on fire you know, and we, we play with great passion and we, we communicate a lot and talk a lot. But I think the struggle has been sometimes when we're both away. I'm in the UK and Talia's in Jamaica. Um, and she's had studies and so it's been difficult to kind of like train together and build the kind of like just the fine details. Where did you go? When do you go? And all those kind of stuff. And it makes a big difference. But we haven't let it hamper us. And as Talia said, so we've been making really good progress uh, with what we have. And yeah, just showing the world that we have really great talent. Yeah. in Jamaica. And now that your eyes are set on the Olympics and that's the plan, it's a big plan, yeah. if I'm to say so, will you and Talia be doing a lot more to ensure that you're in the same place at the same time to get the training that you'd need? Because, I mean, you are getting through the tournaments, winning and doing better than some of the people that, of course, get to train more than you. So now that we're thinking Olympics, are you all planning to just make your schedules work around what you need to get done? I think so. Um, that's definitely a plan. Talia has just recently gradu graduated Congrats, from university. Thank you. So congratulations. So we actually have um, two sort of mini training camps yes. um, after the national championships in Spain and in Denmark. And so in those we get an opportunity to train together, to work on certain skills, and just kind of like journey away outside of you know, the region and kind of like fine tune our skills a little bit. And so hopefully we can do a little bit more like that um, in the new year. Yeah, and Samuel, you've been making the headlines where badminton is concerned. I read one headline in particular, and it stood out for me about making the top 100 by 2024, yeah. which is next year. Yeah. What's that coming along for you? It's not far off, actually. Uh, at the moment, I'm 136. Yes. And so we've been making really good progress. Uh, we've been playing really well, you know, battling with some of the top guys on the circuit. Uh, but we just need to get those breakthrough wins to kind of like accumulate those points, as Talia said. Yeah. Um, because the thing is that they take a look at only your top 10 highest tournaments, mm -hmm. and so you have to keep bettering your results. So it's only 10. And if you get to a point where you only win the same amount of points, then you just stay where you are. Yeah. So you have to be progressing and kind of getting those wins in the higher tournaments. 
And, and Talia, when we think about badminton, the support is not as it is for the major sports, and that's a fact. You know, they, they turn out even when you all are playing, you know, to get the country to rally behind you. What will need to be done? Yeah, it's just about support and funding because unlike other sports, you know, badminton doesn't have as much sponsors, you know, it doesn't have as much endorsements. So if we get more support from financial organizations, then that would be good because we're able to pump that in the sport and we're able to produce more athletes like Samuel and myself. Yeah. So it's just about getting that exposure to the sport, letting persons know that, you know, badminton is played in Jamaica because sometimes when people ask me what sport you play and I'm like badminton they're like you know what is that so it's just about Ricardo <laughs> <laughs> no, no I would never say that I know exactly what it is yeah so it's just about like getting that exposure so the Jamaican people know and then that's when we can get people to kind of give into the sport like how they're giving to other major sports so it's about getting that into the sport and then we can have better results and you know it can be like in Jamaica, we can have better competition. So when we play here, you know, it's as good as playing in Canada or in the US or in other countries in the Pan Am region. Yeah. yeah. You know, what you guys are embarking on is something special. I am old enough. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember when Nigella Saunders qualified for the 2004 Olympic Games. And I just remember what a massive deal that was to have um, a non track and field athlete, non swimmer. Um, representing the country at the Olympic Games. So that in itself was special. Um, you two have already created your own bit of history, getting to the quarterfinal, Samuel in singles at the Commonwealth Games, um, Talia in doubles for you at the Commonwealth Games, winning a mixed doubles bronze at the CSC Games. I'm not even going to ask you about outside the badminton community, but within the badminton community, do you get a sense, a feel, of how important you are to badminton and especially to badminton in this region and in this country specifically? Well, honestly, sometimes maybe no, because I always think that, you know, if I can do it, if I train hard enough, then, you know, someone else can do it as well. And they, once they train hard enough, so it's like sometimes I honestly have to like look at the stuff that I've actually done and things we've done as a pair. And I'm just like, whoa, you know, did we really do all that? Because it's like I'm focused on this goal. But then sometimes when you're focused on something, you don't see the progress that you've made. You kind of just have to stop and take a step back and be like, you know, you've been making good strides. Samuel, did I just hear her say that she has underestimated what you guys have achieved over the years? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, no, I think it's huge. It's huge what we've done. Yeah. And I think, even as you were speaking, you know, like, I think just for us, like you said, to kind of pioneer a path for others to kind of like have some hope and belief. Yeah. And especially for Talia to like set a different culture in terms of pushing forward in the women's category and not just holding back, you know, she's really set like a path for others to say, hey, I can like do it, I can go forward, you know, and so I think it's really good. I mean, playing in the Commonwealth, you know, representing, playing in all these big tournaments, people seeing the flag of Jamaica like bearing, and not just playing, but playing well. I think that's yes. a huge thing, you know, and it's been something I've been proud of and hopefully, you know, we can keep pushing that to new levels. Yeah, I want to get an understanding of both your parts because Samuel, you're in the UK, Talia, you remained in Jamaica, and we now have that coming together to create this wonderful mixed doubles team. Um, but Talia, let's start with you. Just give us an understanding of your journey to this stage. Yeah, so I actually started in first form, so which have been 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when she came yeah. to the club. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah, yeah. I started in first form. I didn't. <laughs> This high, you know? I was really small. Yeah. By the way, she is still this high. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. she is still really yeah. small. Yeah, but I started and um, my dad's co-worker introduced me to the game and ever since I fell in love with it. I went to training three times a week. I trained at my alma mater, um, Bishop Gibson High. Did that for five years. Went to the Carter College, continued playing. I played throughout CSEC. I played throughout Cape. I passed all my subjects. And then I went off to university in Jamaica. I got a scholarship to study human resource management and a minor in psychology. That was a little rough because, you know, balancing university and 
badminton is not very easy and in Jamaica the university didn't really cater for you know mm. me being able to train so I would have trained in the night went to school in the day so it was quite difficult sometimes I thought and I was like well you know this is a lot but it's just about just keep pressing and keep going but being able to go to more tournaments you know us having a lot of conversations and like how we need to play, what the tactics is like, and just learning about each other yeah. really helped our chemistry on the court because yeah. I would be training here in Jamaica, he would be training in the UK, and we would only meet up at tournaments and then after a game we'd sit and we'd discuss for hours. At first I hated it. <laughs> yeah. I hated it so much and I'd just be like, I don't really want to talk about this, but you know, after time and time again, the more we communicated, it, it helped our chemistry on court. So it was just about, I'm in Jamaica, I'm training, you know, I'm playing singles out here. I don't get a lot of mixed practice, but then when I do play with Samuel, you know, you have to change and adapt. Yes. So it's just about like learning, it, learning everything that I'm learning in Jamaica and still being able to move over to when we go to tournaments and when I go to other training camps, you know, garnering as much knowledge. So it hasn't been an easy path, you know, funding has been an issue as well because trust me, badminton is not an, an achieved sport. Yeah, so yeah. it's been a lot of struggles, but it's also been very rewarding. Yeah. Samuel, from your standpoint as someone who has had the opportunity to train overseas and you're in the UK, I want to get an understanding of your own path, but I also want to get an understanding of how you feel about the significance of Talia doing everything that she's done based here in Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah, um, like you said, similar to Talia, trained in Mandeville. Um, trained for like, I think, I thought when I was seven, so trained for like 10 years in Jamaica, Mandeville, and then I decided to go to university in the UK. Yes. So I went to a sports kind of academic hybrid university mm. called Loughborough University, which is uh, one of the top sports universities in the UK. And Is that the university that Yona Knight Wisdom goes to? I'm not sure, I'm not okay. sure. But it's the one that um, Adam Peaty went to, trained at. Okay. You know, wow. swimmer, yeah. <laughs> so they had like a lot of like big time athletes. But the thing is, the, the environment was very much curtailed to be able to study and train. So different from what she experienced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so everything was pretty much on campus. So I went to training seven to nine. Yeah. Um, then I went to class, cycled to class on campus, then cycled back to training two to four. And then back to class, and that was it. And so everything was... What a life. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. What a life. No, it was really nice. So you could really zone in. And they also gave athletes the chance to split their, their final year into like a third and fourth year. Yeah. So you could train more and like kind of spread the workload. And so when I went to that university, I learned a different level of professionalism. Like what does it mean to be a professional athlete and, you know, come to training on time and just different things that... I didn't really rehearse that much often here. And so, yeah, it really grew me into a different type of athlete. And what does it mean to prepare for a training session the night before? I just used to rock up and say, OK, I'm on time. That's all right, you know? <laughs> but you know, the coaches there were like, no, you need to prepare from the night before. What do you eat? What, how much sleep do you get? Is your bag packed? All those kind of stuff. And so that really like, kind of lent itself to me growing. Um, so when, like you say, you know, knowing the struggles that Talia has had to go through. Yeah, I'm extremely proud of her for pushing and not just accepting the status quo because she's definitely been pushing on a different level to those around her. Yeah. And so it's been, it hasn't been easy for her to kind of like set the, the standard. And so we always talk about it. We always kind of rehearse and build and talk about what we're like kind of pushing forward to. And she always had the inner drive inside of her. And so I think that's one of the, the great things I love about playing mix with her. Um, mm -hmm. which I haven't really found in other girls. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> other partners, other mixed double partners. Sorry, mixed double partners. <laughs> remarkable. Um, absolutely remarkable and a great way to end. By the way, both of you are from Mandeville, Manchester. Yeah. Um, the five-time Olympic gold medalist, Elaine Thompson, here is from Manchester as well. Did you guys live close to her? No, you know. No. <laughs> Maybe if I live close, I'd be able to run, but <laughs> I didn't come from. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. That's it. Hopefully, we'll be seeing Talia and Samuel at the Olympic Games in Paris 2024, which, of course, we'll have on your home of champions, Sportsmax. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone.